Welcome to my channel. Subscribe and enjoy my new stories every day. The murmur of concern at work had been a subtle undercurrent, easy to ignore amid the rush of deadlines and meetings. But today, as I walked into the office, the whispers crystallized into a question posed by my colleague, Anna. Hey, everything okay at home, she asked, her expression a mix of curiosity and concern. I've heard some talk about your wife. They say she's been seen quite often at the cafe down the street, always with the same man. At first, her words seemed absurd, too ridiculous to take seriously. Emily, my wife, and the cornerstone of my life, in a cafe with another man? It couldn't be. But the seed of doubt was planted, watered by the years of shadows cast by a familiar rival, my younger brother, Luke. Driven by a mix of denial and the need for truth, I found myself outside the cafe the very next day. The bell above the door jingled as I stepped in, a sound usually comforting, now a herald of potential betrayal. There, nestled in the corner under the warm glow of a solitary table lamp, were Emily and Luke. Laughter danced between them, intimate and private. My heart sank as the scene unfolded like a grotesque play. The world narrowed to the low murmur of their voices, the clink of coffee cups, the too familiar touch of Luke's hand on Emily's arm. Luke, who had always had everything, my toys, my parents' attention, and now, it seemed, my wife. The confrontation was a blur of anger and hurt. Emily, what is this? I demanded, my voice a mix of pain and rage. She looked up, startled, her face draining of color. Mark, it's not what it looks like, she stammered, but the guilt was written all over her. Luke stood, his posture relaxed, an irritating smirk playing at his lips. Calm down, brother. We were just. Don't brother me, Luke. Not after this, I snapped, cutting him off. The cafe around us fell into an uneasy silence, patrons staring with open curiosity. The rest of the day was a haze of shattered illusions. My trust in Emily crumbled with each excuse she tried to make. The marriage I thought was fortified by love was a facade, and Luke, the perennial thief of my happiness, was its undoing. In the solitude of our home, I confronted the wreckage. Emily's pleas for forgiveness became a distant echo as I packed her belongings. The decision was a shard of ice in my chest, cold and hard. I want you out, Emily. I can't look at you the same way anymore, I said, my voice devoid of warmth. She sobbed, begged, but the brother who had overshadowed my childhood had now tainted my adult life irrevocably. With a heavy heart, I watched her leave, her figure a shadow against the setting sun, and I shut the door on her and the life we had built. As night fell, the silence of the house was a canvas for my plans. Revenge, a concept so foreign to me before, now took root in my thoughts. If Luke and Emily had chosen to betray me, then they would learn the cost. No more would I be the passive victim, it was time for action. The chapter of trust had closed, cruelly and abruptly. Now, a new chapter of retribution was about to begin. The next morning dawned with the residue of betrayal still thick in the air. The house felt emptier, the silence louder, the spaces where Emily's belongings had been now stark reminders of her absence. My mind, once clouded with confusion and pain, now harbored a single, sharp focus, retribution. As I sat at the kitchen table with my laptop open, my fingers paused above the keyboard. Revenge was a path fraught with pitfalls, yet my heart thundered with the need for justice. It was then I remembered a piece of crucial information, Luke's upcoming business presentation, his most important yet. Sabotaging it would be the perfect strike. I picked up my phone and dialed his number. The line trilled before he answered, his voice cautious. Mark? What do you want? Luke, we need to talk. About everything. Can we meet? I kept my voice neutral, belying the storm of emotions inside. There was a pause, a breath of hesitation. All right. Where? The park. One hour. I replied before hanging up, 
not waiting for his confirmation. As I drove to the park, the plan formulated clearer in my mind. I would confront Luke, yes, but more importantly, I would subtly extract the details of his presentation. Knowledge was power, and in this case, it was the weapon I needed. Arriving at the park, I found Luke already there, pacing under the autumn-tinted leaves. His face was lined with stress, eyes wary as he spotted me. Mark, he began, his tone conciliatory, I know you're angry, and you have every right to be, but... Save it, Luke. I'm not here to rehash what you've done. I want to know about your project, I interrupted, cutting to the chase. His eyebrows knit together in confusion. My project? Why? Just curious how you're planning to handle the presentation. I mean, after all, you've always been the golden boy. Wouldn't want to see you fail, I said, my voice dripping with feigned concern. Luke relaxed slightly, perhaps flattered or misled by my interest. He started talking, and as he did, I listened intently, not to forgive but to find the thread I could pull to unravel him. We talked for over an hour. By the end, armed with the knowledge of his strategies and key data points, I was ready. I left him with a pat on the shoulder and a hollow promise to clear things up with Emily. Driving away, my next stop was clear. I headed to the office of one of Luke's major competitors, a man I knew only by reputation. With the information securely stored in my mind, I was ready to negotiate a betrayal of my own. Mr. Collins, I greeted as I entered his office later that afternoon. I have information that could be of great interest to you. The tall, gray-haired man behind the desk looked up, intrigued. And who might you be? Someone who could help you outshine Luke Harrison at the upcoming conference. Interested? My voice was steady, the mask of the aggrieved brother replaced by the cold strategist. What followed was a dance of words and promises, as I laid out Luke's plans, twisting the details just enough to make them misleading yet believable. Mr. Collins's eyes sparkled with greed and the thrill of competition. As I left his office, a deal in place, the weight of my actions began to settle on my shoulders. I was no longer just the betrayed husband, I had stepped into the murky waters of vengeance, and there was no turning back. Tonight, as I sit alone in the quiet of my once shared bedroom, I ponder the cost of such revenge. The battle lines are drawn, not just against Luke but within myself. The journey forward is uncertain, but one thing is clear, I am changed, and there is no undoing the steps I've taken today. The days leading up to Luke's crucial business presentation were a blend of anxiety and calculated moves. I watched from the sidelines, my interactions with both Luke and Emily minimal but cordial, a facade necessary to keep my plans under wraps. The morning of the presentation, I found myself among the audience in the packed conference hall, a nondescript figure in the back row. My stomach churned with a cocktail of anticipation and remorse, knowing that today would mark the culmination of my schemes. Luke stepped onto the stage, his confidence palpable even from a distance. As he began, articulating his vision and strategies with the charisma that had always made him the center of attention, I could almost forget the personal betrayal, focusing instead on the professional sabotage about to unfold. However, as he progressed, introducing the data and insights I had fed to Mr. Collins, the atmosphere shifted. From the corner of my eye, I saw Collins enter the room, his presence like a shadow growing with the afternoon sun. Luke's presentation hit the critical point, and that's when Collins stood up, his voice booming over Luke's words. Excuse me, Mr. Harrison, but it seems much of what you're proposing is remarkably similar to our own upcoming projects. Can you explain this unlikely coincidence? The room hushed, all eyes pivoting between Collins and Luke. Confusion marred Luke's face as he attempted to respond, his words stumbling, faltering under the unexpected assault. Mr. Collins, I assure you any similarities are purely coincidental. Our research and strategies were developed independently, Luke managed, his voice a mix of defiance and uncertainty. But isn't it convenient how specific data points, which our company treated as confidential, are mirrored in your presentation? 
How do you explain that? Collins pressed, his accusation hanging in the air like a thick fog. The confrontation escalated as Luke tried to defend his integrity, his explanations growing more desperate. I watched, a silent observer, my heart sinking as the spectacle unfolded. This was my doing, my revenge, but the taste was bitter, not sweet. Amidst the chaos, I caught Emily's gaze from across the room, her face a canvas of shock and pain. In that moment, the victory of revenge seemed hollow, overshadowed by the wreckage of relationships I once valued. As the crowd dispersed, a mix of murmurs and speculation swirling around, I approached Luke, who stood isolated, the weight of public humiliation bowing his shoulders. Luke, I started, my voice low, I know what you did was wrong, but this wasn't how I wanted things to end. He looked at me, his eyes narrowing. What do you mean? Did you have something to do with this? His accusation wasn't off the mark, and guilt gnawed at me. I was angry, Luke. I wanted you to feel a fraction of the pain you caused me. The confession felt like tearing a part of myself out and laying it bare. Luke shook his head, a bitter laugh escaping him. So, you decided to destroy my career? Is that your idea of brotherly love? Our conversation was cut short as Emily approached, her steps hesitant. Mark, what's happening? What did you do? Facing them both, the truth ready on my lips, I paused. The plan had been set in motion, driven by hurt and betrayal, but now, standing before the consequences, I questioned its worth. Emily's presence, a reminder of the love we shared, the family we were, collided with the fury of betrayal, leaving me adrift in a sea of conflicting emotions. I. I made a mistake, I admitted, the weight of my actions heavier than I anticipated. I thought I wanted revenge, but I didn't realize the cost would be so high. The trio of us, bound by years of shared history now marred by betrayal and retribution, stood amidst the ruins of what could have been. The path forward was unclear, the damage possibly irreparable, but the first step, I knew, had to be honesty in a plea for forgiveness, from both sides. As I voiced my apology, the road to redemption seemed long and uncertain, but necessary. The intrigue of retribution had played out, leaving behind the question, could there be a way back from the brink, or had the final lines already been drawn? In the days following the disastrous presentation, the silence between us was deafening. The office corridors, once filled with casual laughter and shared plans, now echoed with the quiet murmur of scandal. Luke's professional reputation was in tatters, and Emily, caught between the ruins of her marriage and her brother-in-law's revenge, struggled to reconcile her role in this unfolding tragedy. As I sat alone in the dim light of my study one evening, a plan darker than any before it began to form. The initial taste of revenge had been bitter, unsatisfying. I realized that only something drastic could cleanse the stain of betrayal. Mark, can we talk? Emily's voice was hesitant as she entered the room, her figure framed against the doorway. I looked up, masking my intentions with a calm exterior. Of course, Emily. What is it? She took a deep breath, her eyes searching mine for a hint of the man she once knew. I want to apologize, truly. What I did was unforgivable, but I never meant to hurt you like this. And Luke, he's broken, Mark. Isn't this enough? I stood, approaching her slowly. You think an apology can fix what's been broken? You both took everything from me. Now, I'm going to take everything from you. Her eyes widened, misunderstanding the depth of my resolve. Mark, please, think about this. We can find a way to. I have thought about it, Emily. And I've made my decision. The following day, I initiated the final phase of my revenge. Using the network of contacts I'd cultivated over years, I began to circulate rumors about Emily's personal and professional misconduct, exaggerations and lies mixed with just enough truth to be credible. Her reputation, like Luke's, began to crumble under the weight of public scrutiny. For Luke, I took a more direct approach. I anonymously tipped off one of his biggest clients about alleged illegal activities, 
fabricated evidence planted cleverly enough to provoke an investigation. As the authorities began to circle, Luke's panic became palpable. Two weeks later, the fallout was evident. Emily had moved out, her presence in my life reduced to a series of terse emails and legal notices. Luke was fighting both the legal system and a collapsing career. Neither had the resources to counter the swift destruction I had orchestrated. In the ultimate confrontation, I arranged to meet Luke at the same cafe where I had first seen them together. As he sat across from me, his face haggard, his eyes desperate, I felt a cold satisfaction. Mark, why are you doing this? What do you want from me? Luke's voice was ragged, the fight gone from him. I wanted you to feel what I felt, I said quietly. And now that you do, my work is done. Luke slumped, defeated, his gaze falling to his hands. There's nothing left, Mark. I've lost everything. That was the point, I replied, standing. Goodbye, Luke. As I left the cafe, the finality of the moment settled around me. Emily and Luke, the betrayers of my trust, had been extinguished from my life. I walked away not with the triumphant stride of a victor, but with the weary steps of a man who had lost much in the pursuit of retribution. The last echoes of our relationship, of love, family, and betrayal, faded into the background noise of the city, and I was left to contemplate the cost of vengeance. Was the price of their destruction worth the hollow victory I now held? As I disappeared into the crowd, a singular truth became clear, revenge could destroy others, but it had the power to consume the Avenger just as completely.